Hello people, welcome back to the second episode of the Corgi 64 project where we're building a simulated computer. Where we last left off, we created, we set up our development environment and also created this Hello World program and compiled and ran it. Uh, so what we're going to do now is we're going to start to set up our actual project to be able to get, get ourselves programming on this new um, simulated computer. Now I did a few things since last time. Uh, th there's a couple kind of housekeeping things that will allow us to have a much uh, better time uh, with this project or with development in general and I created a, uh, a source and a bin directory. In the source directory I put our main.cpp file which we have yet to create. I also created a build.bat and a clean.bat file. So let's take a look at uh, what we're doing for this. Uh, if you Let's or let's look, take a look at the reason why we, we want to do this. So let's go over to our command prompt, and if we look uh, in our directory, we have our uh, bin build clean computer design CPU everything in our directory, and so we have this hello uh, hello .cpp file. So if we compile it, we see that we get a, a hello .exe and a hello .obj file. Now, if we had um, uh, debugging turned on in our through a command line switch, we'd we'd have even more files here, and we don't want when we compile, we don't want to have all of these co compilation files showing up in our directory along with all the rest of our um, source files. It just it's it's very messy, and then uh, and then when you go to clean things up, you may accidentally delete one of your source files. So what we want to do, let's see, let's delete this object file, let's delete the exe file. So what we want to do is we'd like to have our exe and all the other things that our compiler spits out go into say a bin directory so we know that's exactly what our compiler has put out and not ourselves. And so the way that we can do that uh, in a simple way is uh, to create a build.bat file. And what, it only has uh, a few lines in it. Uh, we, we turn echo off, so echo is when um, is basically the com program repeating things out to the command line. So uh, when we type these commands in, we don't want them to be echoed out to the command line. We just want them to happen. So we turn echo off. And this at sign actually says, hey, don't print the word echo either because, uh, because echo is not off yet. So this at sign allows us to turn echo off before it's even off. Uh, this make directory. So if we don't have a bin directory, we're going to make a directory. Um, and this uh, push D is a command that is used in the Windows command line um, that allows us to kind of push a directory on a stack. So it allows us to temporarily kind of change the directory that we're in. Um, and so instead of doing a CD where we'd change our directory kind of permanently, we just push D. So we push a directory and then we can pop that directory back off when we want to um, exit out of that particular directory. So what we do is we go into our bin directory and then we can run our, our compile um, a command. So we'll use our compile command and then since we're in the bin directory we want to exit out of the bin directory and we want to go into the source directory and then compile our main project. So hopefully that makes sense and after we're done we can pop that directory and go back out to our top level here where we've got our build.bat. So <clears throat> what we need to do is if we're gonna try this build.bat we should probably um, create a main.cpp file. Oh, uh, actually before we do that, let's take a look at the clean.bat. So after we're done with all this, we probably want to, uh, uh, sometimes you just want to clean out that directory um, and all we have to do is run a couple different lines. Uh, we can turn echo off since we don't want to have our command line be chatty and then we can just delete every file uh, that's in that uh, bin directory. And so that's how we clean clean our, our project and build our project. 
very simple. So anytime we want to build, we just do build.bat and it will run those commands for us. So if we want to test these things out, we want to test build and we want to test clean, what we need to do is we need to build a main.cpp file. So I went ahead and uh, created a cpp file uh, that has a few things in it uh, to kind of get us started. Um, so I guess I should go ahead and explain a few of these things. Um, this include cstandard.io is, uh, or actually all three of these things are kind of uh, standard C uh, header files. So in, if we were doing this in C, we'd actually do uh, standard.io.h. That's what it would be called before. And you, the other one would be uh, standard lib, and the other one would be standard int.h. And what these header files do is they provide us with functions that are very useful to us. So standard IO provides us with all the standard um, input and output um, things that we want to accomplish. Mostly, uh, we're just using it for printf. The standard lib allows us to, uh, it provides information for memory uh, allocation and a few other functions. So we're gonna be using malloc from that. And then for standard int, uh, allows us uh, access to these precise uh, descriptions of integers. So this uint8 dash uh, underscore t is an 8-bit unsigned integer. And that comes from the, uh, the standard int header file. So the next thing what we would want to do is we actually want to define some, uh, some of our data types. Um, I, I don't like typing out uint8 underscore t all the time. I'd rather just call it byte. Uh, because that's how I like to think of them as bytes. And instead of int64 underscore t, I like to use i64. It's just far more compact. Uh, and uh, that's what we're going to do. So then uh, the next thing that we're going to do is we're actually going to build our CPU. And uh, what I've got so far uh, for a kind of filler, filler or kind of a, uh, a pre-done CPU is we're going to have a series of registers, right? And they're all gonna be 64 bits long, and they're gonna be integers, and we're gonna have register A, B, we're gonna have the program counter, the uh, stack pointer, and the status register. And this goes back to our CPU design. So um, actually, I, I have a, uh, a C register here, so we should probably put the C register in there. So let's put the C register. And then uh, the other thing that we're gonna have is we're gonna have a pointer to an array of memory. So an array of bytes, and that's gonna be our memory. And so uh, that's very good. Um, the next thing that we've got is uh, a no-op. So a no-op in a CPU is just an operation that does nothing. It just takes up cycle space. So uh, in the old days of computers, no-ops were useful for controlling the timing of things. So you maybe you wanted to delay something by a few cycles to make it line up with something else that you want to do, maybe graphics on the screen or so forth. So here, it's just kind of useful for being able to have kind of an operation that doesn't do anything, but it's a good placeholder for us. Uh, we need to have an address table. Oh, actually, so this is an idea that I got from the 6502. The 6502 processor, which is in, uh, or at least kind of a 6502, is in the uh, the NES and a few other a uh, few other game systems, and even the Commodore 64. Uh, it, it it has 13 different address modes, so there's different ways that you can address things. And I was uh, originally had an idea to where I would have a certain number of address modes, not nearly as many, but I think uh, for this design, I decided to simplify it a little bit. And so we won't actually have to worry about address modes. So we're gonna take that away for now. Uh, we probably won't use address modes at all because uh, of the simplified design. Uh, now the opcodes, uh, this is very important. Um, I actually kind of, uh, took this um, design from someone who wrote a uh, 6502 emulator. Um, I'll put a link to that down in the description. 
uh, it's it's a very good cycle accurate 6502 emulator and so I figured I'd, I'd take this kind of format um, it's very good so this allows us to have a total of 256 op, op codes and um, it also allows us to kind of uh, organize them in a way where we can easily find them right so uh, since there's only 256 if we write it in hex right uh, 0 0 is 0 bytes and FF it uh, stands for 255 so that gives us a total of 256 uh, codes op codes and what we'll do here is we'll actually just put a uh, uh, our functions here right so uh, we'll end up replacing uh, these no ops with functions that we're going to place for our codes and these these uh, op codes will actually have hexadecimal numbers so we'll use a byte to identify our hex code and that's how our uh, functions will be called so what will happen is when we write programs the programs will be written in these uh, this byte code or binary and our instructions will be one byte long or possibly nine bytes if they have a data or an address next to them but let's say at the simplest case we're gonna have one byte uh, uh, opcodes and what will happen is we will read the, we will fetch that bytecode and then we'll say okay let's look up let's decode that uh, that code and let's say okay what function should we run and we'll be able to say okay uh, if it's uh, if the byte is has a value of one then it will execute this function right here and that's how we're going to actually run our system. We're actually going to run it by executing um, uh, functions that we put in this op table. And we, we've limited ourselves to a maximum of 255. In our CPU design, we're actually only using 50 something, or I don't know, somewhere close to 40 or 50 op codes, uh, at least to start us out with. And that will be enough for us to write some interesting programs. So that is the op table. Then we're going to have a, um, oh, there's a couple um, functions that won't be available to our program, but that we'll use our, as kind of external functions to get ourselves running. So we want to be able to reset our CPU, set everything to zero. We also want to run our CPU, uh, and that's kind of like having a power button so we can we can turn the power button, we can have a reset button. And then we're going to have this main function where we can kind of test our uh, CPU as we, as we run it. So that is, the, uh, that is our, <coughs> our main function. Uh, to test this thing out, we want to be able to test our build.bat. We're actually not using any of this right now, so it doesn't matter. You can actually just, if you want to test this thing out, you can just do include C standard IO and then create this main function. And then let's just write printf uh, testing main. And then once we have that, we can go over here. We can type in build.bat.bat. And uh, we will now see that we've compiled, you know, if everything works correctly, we will have compiled our system. If we look at our directory, we don't see an executable here, but if we look at our bin directory, let's see, then, oh, actually, let's see, dir bin, we'll see that our main.exe, our main.object file are, were put in the bin directory exactly where we want. So if we want to run our program, we can do bin forward slash uh, main.exe and if we run that we see testing main so we've we know that we've done it uh, correctly so going back here there is uh, one more thing I think I want to cover uh, and that is testing so we do have a main function here to do some testing so as we immediately build something we can we can do test here but what we really want to do is we want to have uh, some sort of kind of unit tests for our system and that way if we ever decide that we want to make an architectural change or some other change in our system we want to ensure that we didn't break anything else um, in the rest of our program because as we go along uh, building an ent entire 
simulated computer is a little bit more of a larger project. So what we want to do is we want to be able to run some automated tests to make sure that we haven't introduced any um, bugs to our system. So what we'll, uh, what we'll do here is in our source directory, we're just going to create a new file and we're going to call it uh, tests.cpp. Uh, and this one will have, uh, let's, let's include uh, C standard IO. And this will just be kind of a little template. We won't have too much in here. Uh, C standard lib. And we'll create a main function. And then what we'll, what we'll end up doing is we're going to actually create a whole lot of different functions, a, a test, a function that will test every one of the things that we write. So every opcode that we write, we're going to write a test and we'll be able to test it here. And so then we'll be able to uh, compile and run our tests to see if we are doing things correctly. So that's that sets up our test system. So that is a, um, I think a good introduction. I think I'm going to stop here so that way in our next video we'll actually start writing our first uh, function to implement our, our CPU. So thanks for watching. Until next time.